Hi guys, this is Justin with DuraClutch, and today we're going to do the install of our traction control kit um, or TCS system for a 2021 Ranger Northstar. Uh, the part number on this is 15 047, and it fits a lot of the newer 2021 model Ranger 1000s, um, but we have specific fitment for that on our website. So the kit is going to come with just a few things um, it's got the main harness, and then it's got a new relay that we're going to replace for the rear differential and then it has the two light up switches that come with the kit and then it has the decal and a few zip ties. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, we tip the box so we can get access back there and we're gonna start with the harness and the single end plug-in um, that's on its own is what we're gonna plug into the rear differential here. Okay, so the stock uh, connector is right here and we're gonna unplug this and then the new one comes with a capped end on it here, so we'll take that apart. You're gonna cap off the stock end, and then the harness that we've supplied is gonna plug into the factory plug end there. Okay, so we've just got the harness plugged in in the back and it's laying loose. The next thing that we're gonna do is to unplug the front part of the connector so it ends up just like this and this is how we're going to run it into the front of the machine. So in the back end here on a crew model, obviously you skip this step if you have um, just a single bench, but we've just flipped up the seat. We're going to take this piece out. Then we've also removed, um, there's eight darts, sometimes nine or ten if they're on the back side, that hold this um, center console piece in. So we have removed those darts. Then we're going to go ahead and remove this piece. It is connected at the cigarette lighter here. You can just pull that off. We're going to take this end that we took apart and run this through and it's just going to go right over the top of the gas tank and that's what's going to get us to that back bench seat. So then we're going to grab this from the back that we just ran through and pull all the excess. Then we're just gonna run and kind of follow all these factory wires that are here. And that's what's gonna get us our start to get into the front of the machine. So then in the front, it's gonna be similar to the back bench seat we did. We flipped up the seat, take out this. And then again, this has the eight, um, possibly 10, if there's a couple on the back backside, uh, darts that hold this in. But then the front, if it's a North Star unit like this, also has the heater vent tubes. On the back side in here has the heater vent and it's just held on by a zip tie. So all you gotta do is grab it and pull it off. Then on the front passenger side, um, same thing. There's another heater vent tube with the zip tie holding it. So you can just grab that and pop that off. And then that'll give us access to be able to take this piece out. So we brought the wire over the fuel tank. Again, it's just loose for now following kind of this group of wires. And then on these North Star models, there's so many wires running through the middle that it's darn near impossible to get ours through there too. And if you can, that's great. Otherwise you can also run it on the right hand side like we have here, and that'll get you access to the front. When we came on the side, um, that gets us to right here, and that's gonna allow us to come up the front. And then we're just gonna let this lay loose for now, but this will end up getting zip tied into this group of wires here in the middle. We've kind of got the wire laying loose here. Um, and we actually are going to run it right through the center of these two vent tubes. So there is some other wires that run through there, but with that front part of this harness taken off or unplugged, you'll be able to get it right through there. And that's what's going to gain us access to go up into the hood. Okay, so this is the wire that came up through the center, those two tubes. When you reach down there, you'll be able to run it on the inside of the frame here. And then it's going to come up um, just like this behind these lines and run all the way up. And then there is an access hole here that will get you up into the hood. So that's the hole that we've come up back through the coolant bottle and that's gonna allow us to bring the wiring up. We're actually gonna tuck it behind here and that's what's gonna get us to here. And this grommet is how we're gonna run it through into the dash. Okay, so we've ran um, on the backside there of that bottle and then through this center grommet. Um, if you need to make a notch like we did in it like that to be able to get it through, you can. Especially on North Stars, there can be a lot of stuff running through that. Um, if you have light bars or things like that. And that's gonna get us access into the front here. Everything that's on here, whether it's the torque screws, push pins, any of that stuff needs to come out. And then just enough so that you can tip this forward to gain access. This is our wire that we ran through. Um, it should get you somewhere into here. 
Then the piece that we unplugged back in one of the first steps before we ran it is gonna get plugged back in at this point. Once you have that in, then we're ready to install our switches. Okay, so we've ran this wire down through the top. Um, that's through the grommet and that brings us down. And then we've reconnected that harness like we said and that gets us right here. Um, this switch panel just has two push darts in the bottom and then it falls down. And we've already, players put these false switches in, so all you need to do is take one out. Um, if it's an older model that doesn't have those, you'll have to cut that switch out. Um, it'll just match all these other switches that are already there as far as hole size. First thing we're gonna do, this um, drive mode switch, we're going to be replacing. So that's gonna come out. And then this front drive switch is what we're gonna put in. Pops into place. Reconnect this on the back. Okay, so after the front drive is put in, then you have these wires here on the harness and these are gonna go into the 12 volt plug-in. So run this down here. You're gonna unplug power and ground. You don't have to worry about which is which because the power is a smaller spade than what the ground is, so they only will go on one way. You're gonna take the power that we have here, you're gonna plug ours in to the stock. The stock one that you took off is gonna plug into this clear one that we have. Then the ground wire that we supply is gonna go back onto the ground. And this stock ground wire is gonna go on the back side of our ground just like that. So this is what the final hookup should look like on those wires. This is the relay that came with the kit and this we're not gonna mount or anything like that. All it's gonna do is plug into the harness end here and then this is just gonna sit back here. So then once we've put on the relay here that um, plugs into the harness, we've just zip tied it back here just to hold it together to this harness. That way when you put the cover back in, it won't be in the way and it'll kind of keep it off to the side. And then the last part here is gonna be putting on the rear diff lock switch. This one can be tight on crew models as far as the length of the wiring, but it will fit through. So we're gonna put the rear diff lock switch in, pops into place, and then this is gonna go ahead and plug in. And then this panel can go back into place. So we've got the center cup holder back and installed. There is on the North Star models, we have that hose on the front and then the hose going into the back side here that we've reconnected. Then it's just push starts to hold the rest back in. We're putting this rear cup holder back in. Um, the biggest thing to remember is that you have this accessory plug-in that needs to go back together. Again, when you pull power and ground off, you don't really have to pay attention to which is which because the power is a smaller spade, so um, they'll only go on correctly one way. The last part to putting the kit in is this decal that comes with it. Um, this is just an explanation real quick on when the rear diff lock switch should be on or off. There's more details about that in the instruction on our website and stuff, but this uh, is just a quick what you need to do depending on if you have a new driver in the machine or something like that. This is with the key turned on on the machine. This is how we're gonna check and make sure everything's working. This front drive switch, you're gonna leave on basically all the time. You don't really have a reason to ever shut that off. When you have that on, that's gonna stay lit up green. This is how you would normally run it with this on and the rear diff lock off. When you turn the rear diff lock switch on, it's gonna click in the back of the machine. And when you hear that, that's how you know that it's engaging. And then that's gonna blink red. It's a switch that's normally off, and so we have it blinking red so that that way you uh, are sure not to miss that you have it switched on. So once we have everything zip tied up and then all the pieces put back together, that completes the install of the kit. Um, again, you're just gonna turn on those switches, make sure they light up. When that rear diff lock is switched on, make sure that it clicks in the rear differential here in the back. That's how you know it's good to go. Um, if you have any questions on the install or questions on fitment or anything like that, you can go on our website or give us a call.